In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. The second Sunday, speaking also about the sower parable, our message is here. And you will be asking why why it keeps repeating. Last week it was the sower parable, and this week it is the sower parable because this is the time where, in uh, in the tradition in Egypt, that they sow, they plant the seeds or they put the seeds in. Uh, in, in the daily practice. So it is just not a coincidence from the church. It is just the regular thing that the people were doing. And that the church is telling us, whatever business you are doing, think of it in a heavenly way. You can take everything that you can do and you can take it from heavenly perspective or from spiritual perspective or from earthly, and it is all about money. You can do all the, the you can think of it in the same way. So the sower parable, the Lord, the Lord lifted up their mind, telling them, you think that you are just sowing the seeds, and the seeds is the word of God, the sower is, is God or the priest, and, uh, or maybe parent, or maybe a Sunday school servant, or someone who is close to you, is putting a seed, a spiritual seed, and it brings forth more fruit. So the sower parable is, the first thing is you can go to your business and you can think of it as just merely this is business. This is making money. And you can see it from a completely different perspective. No, I'm honoring God. I'm honoring God in being a doctor. I'm honoring God in being a pharmacist. I'm honoring God in being a medical field engineering. I'm honoring God in, in being smart in what I do. And I'm honoring God in what I do. And this is how it works. While people are thinking, oh, that business is business, why you are mixing things up? This is this is a, a Saturday, Sunday, uh, I'm the Christian guy. Monday, all the way to Friday, I'm the one who go and get the money, I'm the aggressive, the meanest, and, and, and there was a man deeply involved in the church. And this, uh, this, uh, servant started not going to church, not going to church, not going to church for a long time. The abunas are reaching out, no response. Servants are reaching out, no response. What's going on? They kept searching and searching them. They said, you know what? No, no, we, we need to know what's going on. So one of the priests knocked on the door and he visited him in his home and he told him, what's going on? Why you disappeared from the church? He kept going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, and then he's not giving him real answers. And he told him, uh, let me tell you something. He was an accountant, very shrewd, smart, sharp accountant. And he was hired by his Sunday school servant lead, Amin al Khidma. So the Sunday school servant lead, the leader of the Sunday school, is the one who has a company, and he hired this servant as an accountant in his company. Are you there or I'm losing you? So he thought that this is the best thing to happen. He will be working for someone who is from the church and it is, things is moving in a very positive way. He uh, worked for him. He started finding accounting mistakes. First accounting mistakes, second accounting mistakes, third accounting mistake. He started reporting it to the head of the department of the accounting. No action is taken. He escalated it to the lead of the Sunday school servant. Almost fraud, big fraud is happening in the company. And he was worried about that, that these people are, are stealing money or taking from the money of uh, the, the righteous uh, servant who is in the church. And it turned out to be that the Sunday school servant lead told him, zip it, you don't say anything, this is how it works here. In our business, our business, Habib, it's business. When it comes to business, we don't honor God. When it comes to business, we do it our own way. When it comes to business, we cut corners because the love of money is more important than the love of God. And here, when the Sunday school servant, the, the righteous accountant, dropped at the ball and he said, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to be associated with anything that has any relationship with the church. But unfortunately, 
there are a lot of things that are opposite to this. As people who are very, very aggressive and mean and money greedy in, in their practice, there are people who are righteous and giving abundantly to the Lord. Abundantly, abundantly to the Lord. I know a very famous uh, man, many, many people aware of, of his name. I will not mention the name. He was working in pharmaceutical business. And this is how he does the business. You produce 10, 10 boxes of uh, ampicillin, uh, amoxicillin antibiotic. On the, on the assembly line, one is taking one box. Count 10, one out. Count 10 of the medication, one is out. Count, count 10 of the vitamins, one is out. And an assembly line, this, this is a huge amount of, of, uh, of medications. And those medications is going to the poor areas with no question, no bragging, nothing. Nobody is saying anything. 10% of his production, not 10% of his profit, 10% of his production. And an unbelievable, unbelievable righteous man that have impacted many. So when the church is telling you the sower parable, this is the, how people are doing business. This is how you are doing your work in school. This is how you practice. Are you going to do it and lift your mind and your, your behavior and your, your, your goals to the spiritual level or no? This is a very important key. When you are in school, be honest and live with integrity and don't cheat because of God, not because of everyone is cheating. You honor God because he is the one who is giving you the blessing, not because, you know what, I can get away with this. So, first thing I want to share with you is how we do the business, how we operate. The church is putting us on a higher level. Be honest and choose to please God, not to please your boss, not to please your mom and dad, not to please your co-workers. Be honest and live and choose integrity that is pleasing to God, not cutting corners to make more money. So, in the sower parable, there are three grounds or four types of grounds, as you can see. I don't know if you see the, the, the screen or not. The wayside, the rock, and the, the, the seeds that fell on the throne, the thorns. I'm sorry, the, the spelling mistake there. The seed that fell on the thorns. And there is a, ground, a good ground, and this good ground brought 30 or 60 and 100 folds. Out of the three, out of the three that bring no fruit, there was the middle one, which is the rock. And what happened on the rock? If you are, if you are throwing seeds, and uh, the the ground is full of uh, of uh, the soil material, if there is a rock hidden below the layer of the ground, you don't see it. Who will ret what will retain more temperature? The soil or the rock? What will have more temperature in it if the sun is is rising? What will have more temperature, the soil or the rock? The rock. The rock will retain more, more of the temperature. And when the temperature is retained in the rock, when it is heated a little bit, so the seed is coming, there is temp a, higher, a little bit of higher temperature, and there is also no depth. So what happened in the rock is the seed fell on the rock, it sprouted very quickly, but there is no roots. The roots doesn't, it hits the rock. So that's why it doesn't last for a long time. It just appears to grow very, sprout very quickly. And it doesn't last, doesn't go anywhere. You attend a sermon and say, well, this is the best sermon ever I have attended. And I'm thinking of doing this and this and that and that and that. And you go home, sleep, nothing is happening. This is when we are excited about stuff, then we don't take action. When we are very, very uh, emotional about things, and I will serve and I will dedicate my life to God, and I will do this and I will do that, and I will go to mission trip and I will change my life. Then just nothing happens, just the feelings. And there is no depth, there is no depth. One of the abunas, that is counted as a father of confession of hundreds of other priests. It happened that I was with the, with a group of abunas 
and this Abuna was there, and it was 2 a.m. Two, two in the morning. And one of the Abuna's younger priests asked this old Abuna, and he told him, Abuna, what is really worrying you about the future of the church? Asking the, the older priest, what is really worrying you about the future of the church? And I liked the question, and I said, you know what? Let us listen attentively to what this priest is going to say. And he, uh, he looked uh, to the other priest and he told him, I think the, most, uh, the biggest problem is superficiality. That we are superficial. We are not going in depth. Everything is superficial. Everything, when things are superficial, it doesn't have depth, it doesn't have root, it doesn't, it is not real. One lady, one lady, is it, uh, I will tell you the lady about the, the, the story of the lady just uh, in a few moments. Superficiality is being hypocrite. Superficiality is being, not going into the depth. You go to the scripture, you read the Bible and, okay, you know what, oh, let, me, let me see the social media. You go and you study, but while you are studying, you say, you know what, I know a friend of mine who is in a higher grade who had the same professor. Let me text him or her so as they will give me uh, the answer sheets or their exams before. Or I received a phone call from a family that I never saw. And the dad is uh, bragging about how smart is his son and how great is his son and how beautiful is his son. Fine. And his son made it to a medical school back home in Egypt and he was in from the very very smart people and okay okay and I don't know what this guy is asking me so I told him uncle Yani, how can I help you and he told me uh, uh, I'm just curious if you know anyone who had the old uh, exams of the licensing exams of the medical school so as uh, he would share it with my uh, with my son so as he can succeed Regardless of the request, is this is all what you are asking for to be to, to do the bare minimum to crack how to crack the exam is not to how to learn, how to get by what we do without going in depth, how to read and skim through the Bible without deeply getting getting the chance of that the, the root of the, the, the seed of the word of God will de go deeply inside of our heart. So the heart can be a rock because outside is different from inside. You think that it is a soil, but the inside is there is a rock. And we have this tendency to appear righteous to others, but we deeply inside we are not. So, but when he received the seed on the stony places, this he hears, the word and immediately receive it with joy. Yes, my kid, but very excited. But there is no fruit as well. There is no nothing, no deep fruit is coming. And outside is different from inside. This is the hypocrisy. I say, I am, uh, I pray all the time, like this uh, Sunday school servant lead, appearing to be a leader in the church, but in deep, 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 his, his life is completely away from the Lord. So how to solve this problem? How to solve the problem of hypocrisy? Or the problem of superficiality? You need to go in depth. I, last time I told you, it is very important to dedicate time, just to dedicate time, because without time dedication, we cannot do anything. Dedicate time, dedicate time for prayer, dedicate time for studying, dedicate time for reading, dedicate time for exercise, dedicate time. There is nothing will happen in our life without time dedication. One of the solution, let us search out and examine our heart and our ways and turn back to the Lord. Let us search out and examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. Let us search deeply and examine the heart and see, you know what, why I'm saying this, why I'm acting this way, why I said this. I have taken something that is not mine. What? And we keep holding ourselves accountable, not waiting for 
our needs to be exposed. Let, let us search out and examine our ways and turn back to the Lord. The, 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 one of the solution for hypocrisy is pause and search deeply. Examine your heart in front of God and say, you know what? This is one of my favorite Bible verses, Psalm 139. It says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties. And see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. اختبرني يا رب واعرف قلبي امتحني واعرف أفكاري انظر إن كان في طريقا باطلا أهديني طريقا أبديا search me O God and know my heart if we are honest in front of God just search tell God search me O God and know my heart try and know my anxieties or what I have in my mind what I am thinking of see if there is any wicked way in me see if I am lying See if I'm cheating on exams. See if I'm cutting corners in taxes. See if I'm uh, billing something and asking. This is very common in, in, in practices, different practices. You build something and so you work eight hours and you bill 15 hours. Why? Because oh, they are not going to give me the exact amount of, uh, uh, you are doing this operation that took uh, two hours on in, in surgery and you are billing 15 hours. Why? Ah, because they are going to cut the, from the... You, and games and games and games. Search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me and know my, my mind, and see if there is any wicked way in me. If there is any wicked way, if there is any wicked tendency that I, maybe I want to lie, maybe I want to, to take something that is not mine, maybe I'm, my mind and my heart is not pure. Search me and cleanse me from within, and lead me in the way everlasting and lead me in the way everlasting this is a great solution for hypocrisy if we are honest if we slow down if we stand and evaluate our our days when i was in the 40 days i there was a very a great righteous man of god was walking in the middle of the desert and i saw him i recognized him so i ran all the way and it's very weird setup that this monk is walking in the desert, and I, I saw him, then I ran all the way, and I told him, uh, kissing your hands, uh, it was a bishop kissing your hands, Sayyidna, uh, I'm just a newly ordained priest, and uh, can you give me a word of advice? Then uh, he looked to me in the eyes, and he told me, in the end of every day, lift up your heart and tell God this, what I have done that has pleased you and what I have done that has broken your heart or has displeased you. In every single day you lift up your heart before sleeping and tell God what I have done that has pleased you and what I have done that has upset you and make you sad and sorrowful. This is a very, very simple thing, but this if you do this, you will, this will change your life. Because if I have displeased God during the day, and I'm standing in front of God telling him, I have, search me, O God, and know my heart, and try me, and know my, and my, my mind, and see if there is any wicked day, why I have been gossiping about people when they are not there, why I have been backbiting about people when they are not there, why I have been claiming things that never happened, that are, that are not there, why I, the, the list is very long. But the problem is when you compare yourself with those who are around you, you feel that you are a saint. And if you go to your work and you, you compare yourself with the people who are around you, you feel, oh, you know, they're, they're a contemporary saint. They're a gives it. Ah, they are atheists too. They are uh, uh, stealing and they are lying and they are cheating and they are doing this and they are doing drugs. And they are, uh, the list is very long. So you compare yourself, oh, I'm not doing anything big. But if you want really to compare yourself with something that will make a big difference, compare yourself with the scripture, with the Bible. This is what you compare yourself with. Not you compare with yourself with, the, with your people, people are around you, so what? Many are wicked, many are evil, many are doing bad stuff in your life. So is this is the comparison. The comparison is the measure, is the word of God, is the commandment of God. When kids are going to uh, theme parks, when there was theme parks <laughs> a long time ago, <laughs> uh, I remember my kids, uh, they were they wanted to join uh, a ride, and they told them, okay, 42 inch. So you go, 
Uh, I'm 42. I, uh, that, do I look like I'm 42? That, uh, yeah, you are looking like, uh, I don't know. You go and, and measure yourself. They go, they measure, they keep pushing, uh, standing on the, their tiptoe. And, uh, do I measure? Yes, yes, you are good. Then you can go. The measure that we will be measured with in front of God, it is not that how many people are wicked that you are better than them. <laughs> Congratulations. This is not the measure. The measure is the word of God. And another measure is faithfulness. Another measure is faithfulness. The commandment of God, do I... I will give you an example. In uh, Philippians 4, chapter 8. If you go to the, 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 the word of God. I'm just giving you one simple example. The book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 finally my brethren whatever things are true whatever things are noble whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there is any virtue if there is anything praiseworthy meditate on them of these things or think of those things كل ما هو طاهر كل ما هو لو جيت التيون ارابيك كل ما هو طاهر كل ما هو عادل كل ما هو مسر كل ما صيته حسن ان كانت فضيله ان كان مدح في هذا افتكروا is this is the things that we think of just the things that we think of whatever things are true no lies whatever things are noble whatever things are honoring God whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if any virtue and if anything there is if anything is praiseworthy think of these things meditate on these things praiseworthy so when you hear about someone who did something wrong you don't think of it but you should think of the things that is praising this person or is praiseworthy or are is this is the things that you every one of you and myself thinking of big time no big time including big time the way i think you know i'm, I'm better I'm a, I'm a higher priest and no the commandment of god will count in front of god and we will be telling every one of us that why you didn't do this oh, i was not aware that this is another problem May God give me and give each one of us that at least re remember this. In the, in the end of every day, pause. Leave your phone. <laughs> Don't go to sleep with your phone. I'm telling this to myself as well. And lift up your heart and ask yourself, what today, O oh Lord, what I have done that has pleased you, what I have done that has broken your heart or has upset you. And the things that have upset God, Write it down and pray. Put it in your prayers and tell God, create a meeting in heart of oh God. Give me an everlasting way, not the ways that is in my heart. Whom is the glory forever and